Oh, wait a minute. What is that? What is that? A vehicle is off to my right. Thoughts are our main target coming into this. Basically, it, we're unable to search it without GPR or a magnetometer. There's nowhere else to go on this at this point. I would love to say with 100% confidence that Leslie, Julie, and Timothy are not in this reservoir. For me to like look a family in the eye or anybody and say, you know what, I have cleared this, don't worry about it. I cannot do that. We are back in Katona, New York, working the case of the Guthrie family. Leslie, mom, she was 29 at the time when she went missing February 5th of 1977 with her two children, Timothy, who was three, and Julie, six years of age. The vehicle that we are looking for, Leslie had borrowed from her mother, is a 1974 white Ford Maverick, 300 edition, license plate number 636WNA. If you did not catch our first episode on our search looking for the Guthrie family, the link is in the description down below where it'll bring you up to speed as to our search down by Armark, White Plains, as well as our search along Highway 120, 22, and a couple of other locations. We're going to step back into our morning right now where we meet up with Jennifer as well as Stephanie, Leslie's sister. who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm Jared. I have to hug you. I can't <laughs> shake your hand. Absolutely. Hi. Uh, this is Nick. Hello. I'm Nick. Jennifer. Nick. Nice to yeah. meet you. Nice to meet you. I've got a uh, Dan from down under yeah. here. How are you? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. My so mom, much. Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? Uh, I'm Jared. So much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is Dan. I'm Daniel. Oh, thank you so much. My husband, Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Hi, Darren. How are you doing? Good. We're first and foremost here for you, and we're here for the family. We want to kind of gather all the information and then look at, you know, what's the most probable in all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, we know that, you know, it's February. We yeah. know that the conditions were not good that day. Mm -hmm. And so we want to look at, you know, what is this five mile radius? We know that she's leaving at 1.30 p.m. from picking the kids up over here in Grandview, mm -hmm. but we don't know where she's going. Right. We know that she'd like to go to McDonald's. We know that she'd like to, you know, take the kids to a movie. Yeah. There is enough time during that three and a half hour time period before she needs to pick mom up down at the IBM in Armark yeah. that she had time to do that. But now what route might she end up taking? Now in speaking to you, you're like, oh, well, a lot of times she would come out, she would make a right, she would head down Cherry to 35, she'd jump on 684, and she was comfortable with it. You know, that's what she grew up with. Yeah. So now we need to come back into this, you know, and look at those possible routes and scenarios taking us north before we move south. Okay. Do we know anything about her driving habits or would she always stay on 684? Was she going back down to White Plains? Is that where the McDonald's and, you know, the movie theaters are at? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is something that you can help, you know, answer more for us on that. 117 is the McDonald's huh. in Mount Kisco. Yeah, we were thinking possibly there. So then if they, they did leave that way, then it's the way that you guys, you know, you looked yeah, down you going saying. like 22. Yeah. It, it goes through Chappaqua and and it'll end up down into Armonk. You know, I, I don't know. Right. Uh, I think one thing you don't know, is maybe a month prior, she went to her friend's house in Ohio, um, where she lived before moving to Katona. Okay. But I think she felt pretty alone and isolated when Timmy left and he wasn't coming home all the time and she was home with the kids alone. 
Well, apparently she drove out to Ohio to go see her friend. And on the way out there, she picked up a payphone, called my grandmother and said, hey, I tell Timmy I took the kids out to Ohio. So she didn't tell him in advance. He was on a business trip in Texas when he got the call. Apparently when he got the call, he got on a plane and hot went right to Ohio and drove them home. He was very angry. And not long after that, she was talking to the priest, to the psychiatrist, and she had gone to a lawyer saying she wanted a divorce. That was it. She was over and done with it. And she was really angry, really upset. And the lawyer said, go home, calm down, think it over on the weekend, and let us know if you still want this on Monday. And she disappeared on Saturday. So we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so now we now now we start looking at this as <laughs> simply mess. simply it's a coincidence mess. or or was it on purpose? Uh, Did she grab yeah. them and Maybe. take them to run and leave you know. forever? And my you know my grandmother looked into cults, but I don't think that because um, you take all your money, all your belongings. They you give sure. them. She right. took nothing. Right. Her purse was still in the house. Her Plus clothes. Her car, was there. her car was at the house. Why would she take my mother's car? Right. I don't know. Coming back to the leaving on her own, mm -hmm. you know, with the purse being left behind with, you know, no cash, no belongings. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make sense that she's leaving, yeah. but we have this letter. Is it okay if we share this letter that you, that you sent me? That's, yeah. Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's a big thing because that's yeah, what makes me think it could be yeah. intentional that she did it, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So we, so we have uh, two letters here. You know, first one is just a little note that says, somebody cares a lot for you. Where you are, where you go, always somebody cares. And then the uh, second note says, dear mom, I know you won't understand, but I'm doing what I have to do. Mom, you've been a great mom, so please don't have any regrets. If it wasn't for you, I would have never had any beauty in my life, I think. Yep. For all you and daddy and Jay. And Jay. It's Jay. Did for me. I love you, Leslie. Yeah. So then it's like, you know, she's leaving, mm -hmm. but she's not checking out in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. she she loves her kids. Yeah. I I don't feel like this is a all or nothing if, you know, I'm not going to share. Yeah. In my opinion. You know, we're coming back to the 70s, you know, as yeah. you had mentioned as well, you know, where divorce was frowned upon and you know, it's hard to say, you know, I understand that she, that Timothy had her, you know, evaluated mm -hmm. at the hospital as well. When I spoke with the detective just the other day, he said in 2006, when they called Timmy and they spoke to Timmy, that he said when he came home one day, she was sitting on the couch, catatonic, staring at the TV. And when he looked to see what she was watching, it was just static. So she was definitely, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, coming back to the, I think that a lot of this is just a coincidence mm -hmm. and that because the vehicle is missing, I feel like she's still in the water in the area somewhere. Could be. Um, I, I understand that a couple of years ago, a vehicle was found and you know, you've got your Down hopes here, up, you know, yeah. that, oh that that might've been, been the vehicle and somebody was found inside of it. Like yeah. When they pulled this thing out of the water, I drove down there and it was just yeah. awful. And, but then I realized, you know, that's not the right car. It's not them, but again, we weren't here when they disappeared. Right. Could it have no. been, you know? But anyway, that's been there for years and they didn't find it. Yeah. Right. And they'd yeah. even mapped the bottom of the reservoir and didn't find it. So I'm like, could they be on yeah. the other side? And, and we, run, and we run into that quite a bit also, of, you know, that they map reservoirs, they do scanning yeah. and they end up not finding anything. Yeah. And we come in years later and it's like, know, you have eight shocking. here that you didn't know about. I know, <laughs> it's right. shocking. Right. Yeah. We have two days in the area, and so I think that's kind of where I'm going to start is over here on, like I said, Cherry and 35. And I think we really feel like, too, that 22 where you were searching the first time uh -huh. is so likely because, you know, I've driven down there and you can just go right off. Right. And like with the ice being frozen, kind of go a little bit far out. And then when you're saying there's so much silt, you can't see anything yeah. with a magnetometer, that's where I yeah, because last time, like I said, we had the silt, the sediment, as well as yeah. overgrowth coming up from the uh, weeds that were yeah. in there. So yeah. it was a real difficult scan in there, and I'm really interested in yeah. 22 and uh, 120 there. Like I said, we can run another, yeah. you know, the magnetometer through there. Well, I mean, we can't thank you guys enough. Yeah. All right. Well, perfect. All right. Well, we'll chat later today. Okay. Thanks. Nice meeting you all. Thank you.
first location I want to start off here is this right here was Grandview, where the house was at. Yep. So if she came out, made a right on Cherry, straight down, this is a hill evidently, is what Jennifer was saying. And if she teed right through that intersection, off into the water right there is what I'm most interested in right now. Got you, okay, that makes sense. this hill you know just get oh, steeper right. here and what if she just ends up plowing right on down through there I don't know but let's uh, swing around let's go check it out put eyes on it So, I mean, we have quite a steep still. I don't know if you've ever seen like uh, those videos, icy roads, when people just come, you know, flying down, they go out of control. Yeah. And so as you're going out of control, like what was here, what wasn't here, what was the foliage like in 1977? What, you know, what guardrails or barriers did they have in 1977? Everything is just so different. electronics you got sonars you got a motor you got a flag life jackets magnet buoy check go and you got the motivation and you got the motivation and the skill good luck thank you it will be interesting to see if they can pick up anything underneath here and, um, I'm gonna go get my phone. One thing I was gonna check was um, back in 1977, in of course the state of New York, did they have guardrails along all the bridges? You know what I mean? Because it seems like question. those are kind of a newer thing that because people were going off the side of roads that they finally, number one, decided to do it and two, got the budget that they finally started putting those up. Let's so. remember though, how many times has Jared found, especially when there's snow and ice, oh, yeah. they just go launch over the top of it. Well, yeah, because so. there'd be berms on the side of it. So we just nailed one tree that was underwater. We got another one on the left underwater here. If you've never been with us before, the way that our sonar works is we use a live scope on the right here. The live scope shows anything happening in real time. I want to go back over this right here too. Uh, anyway, this is, shows anything that's happening in real time, whereas our side scan is casting 75 feet to the right, 75 feet to the left. Anything that's black is water column. And so as this number changes here, the black number is also going to change on the grids, whether we're shooting down imaging or side imaging. This one is a picture in time, whereas this one is happening in real time. But let's jump back over this little object that was over here and see if it happens to be the size of a Ford Maverick. I think just the way that that log was laying and reading. And at times you, you can mistake a log or a rock for a vehicle for sure, depending on which way it's laying, which way the uh, sonar is hitting it. And that's why once we identify a potential target, then we come back over it multiple directions to see if it's what it is that we're looking for. We can either rule it out or throw a magnet on it at that time and rule it out that way. Jennifer was saying this is the location where that car was found last year from the 70s that had somebody inside of it. We have a tire out here. And this is what a, a tire looks like on side scan. We're able to scan back on side scan. We can zoom in on it too. So just right along here is the Another 100 yards, we'll check here. All right, I'm satisfied with that run there. Let's 
Let's head back and let's go check some of the ramps over there. 35 heading to uh, 684. Yeah. Looks like they're probably done. Head over to, let me show you the parking spot I'm talking about. Um, right here, as we're jumping on 684, yeah. looks like there's a little pull off area right here. Okay. We're gonna pull off there, okay. throw the boat in here. We wanna okay. check, we wanna check this area. Okay. And it sounds like there's a rumor of a vehicle there i've heard a lot about that i thought that they investigated that but you like you said it's not investigated until you investigate. <laughs> right yeah yeah so so the the town rumor somebody just stopped us randomly on the street this morning wow like oh we watched your stuff we heard you were in town wow. um here's what i heard that there was a family of four that went missing this is the rumor and that a vehicle was found over here but because the state didn't want to cause a distraction they left the vehicle here, and it's unclear from the town folk whether the vehicle was actually ever cleared or not as well. Wow. But it's I'm from the surprised. 70s is what they wow. also said. So we want to go investigate that rumor over okay. here. Okay. And it looks like if we put in here, mm -hmm. it looks like there's little underway accesses yeah, that, we, that, train tracks there. that we can get to. Right under the okay. So we want to check this bridge, we want to check this roadway, okay. and so we'll check all of those ponds through there. Wow. All right, we'll see you over there. Okay. Good. Yeah. Next location is going to be off of 35 right here and 684 for the on-ramp. There's a couple of little bodies of water there and rumor of another vehicle that's there from the 70s that may or may not have been cleared for a family of four. Who knows what the actual story is. Rumors are uh, one of those things that are just always out there. Maybe the rumor turns out to be it was a family of three and people have known about this car for a long time. It was just never investigated. I don't know. I don't have that answer until we put eyes on it ourselves. Yeah, that's a good spot there. Yeah, everything else covered in uh, heavy weeds. Yep. Oh yeah, that'll work. All right, push me out. Turn around. There we go. Good luck. Thank you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up. I don't think at any point there was less foliage along this old 35 here, the Wood Woods Bridge Road that she could have come on off there. But what I'm interested in is straight ahead is the 35 that takes you to the on-ramp at the 684. And so I'm interested in scanning all of that area over there, particularly where the bridge is at. And then we'll come back, we'll scan the old J Street Bridge, which I was actually open in 1977, according to Stephanie. And then we'll head over to where that, the rumor of that other vehicle is as well. Right now we're seven and a half to eight feet deep. Some locations are hitting nine feet. The shallower we get, the more you're gonna end up with this, uh, I don't know if they call it milfoil or 
you know, sometimes you end up with the lily pads up here as well. But the shallower you get, the reason why you get that is because the sun can actually penetrate and get to the bottom to feed it, you know, the uh, sunlight and nutrients that it needs. And in the deeper water, that's why you usually have clear water or clear bottoms for anything that is 10 feet or deeper. So it's a nice clean bottom. I don't feel like there's been much silt and sediment that has actually come into the area on this one. You can see, you know, a tire here. You see the trees here. And here's a tree that is going to be popping up more right here on the left here. I still like the scanning through here. It's uh, still 9, 10 feet deep here. With as much foliage as we have through here, I'm not envisioning a vehicle coming off here and coming through all of that, even in 1977, where the trees would have been smaller. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to head over to under this bridge to the other side. There's another pond over there, which is the pond that has that speculation of a vehicle being over there. So I think that we're going to be too shallow, that the rumor is right over here. And we might be able to get to it. My guess is it's just going to keep getting shallower and shallower over here. Kind of what I'm thinking. It's also too far from the road. Yeah, I'm going to say that was a good rumor on this one. Yeah, see this one is still really close to the road right here. Yeah. We're in seven, seven and a half feet of water. So we're plenty deep to hide a Ford Maverick in here. What I want to do, let's see if we can break through. Let's come back here, break into this section. Okay and see if we can run up underneath that bridge and go cover some more area through here. Yeah, that looks cheaper, so if that sounds good to me. But I feel good about covering all of this right here along the uh, 684. And that would have been the on-ramp, who well, actually right here, that's, so that's the on-ramp that she's taken onto the 684, if that would have been her route. All right now, I have either an old bridge pylon down here or a vehicle. So we're going to run it in a different direction. Here's what I'm looking at right here. This is the newer bridge here. This pylon right here though, or a vehicle, is off to my right. There's nothing right there on my right unless it's this coming all the way into the water, but that would be coming all the way up here if it was. So we want to run it at a different direction. So we're going to X out of there. Back us up. So this is the pylon on the right. Nah, it's just the way the log was reading there. So I have a big log right here laying down. Oh, wait a minute, what is that? What is that? Okay, let me hit that at a different angle. Okay, so it is three feet in height. Three feet in height? Three feet in height. It is, let me go around it. Hit it at an angle. I'm trying to get the uh, length on it. If I can get like a length of 15 to 16 feet. Let's 
see this right here gives me more of a, I'm gonna say it's like 22 to 25 feet in length. More something like an old support that they've knocked down. Maybe an old bridge support that was through here that they've since just laid down. I'll hit it a few different directions, but right now I'm ruling this out as far as it's not a car. I want to get some different readings on it heading different directions so that way we can absolutely rule it out that we have no wheels it's not a car that's buried and silted in and so I want to run this direction with it and get a different read on it so we should be coming and picking it up right about now on the right hand side So if you look at it here, you can see it's bigger at the base, skinnier at the top, and it's roughly 36 feet in height, maybe even 40, which is right in line with those right there. So that one, I definitely rule out for that reason, Brandon. So not a car. Yeah, I agree. Yep, still all really shallow. All right, well that clears this. I'm satisfied with our search through here. this is clear. Okay. I'm just catching my breath still. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Cleared both sides of the, J, the old J Street here. Made my way down to the new J Street. Okay. You have a big, big uh, bridge. I don't know if they had an old bridge there, but it looks like they just knocked that down. That's okay. underwater there. Okay. It's only about six, seven feet deep right there. <sighs> Holy moly. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm out of breath. breath. <laughs> you don't have to talk yet. Um. <laughs> We also went in to, to follow up on that rumor of the other vehicle. Oh, yeah. It just gets way too shallow. Okay. Yep. A lot of distance yeah. between 35 and the foliage and the river, or yeah. the, the pond right here. Yeah. Okay. So it can't get, the, in my opinion, you're not getting a vehicle in there right. yeah. ever. Yeah. Okay. yeah, right. And then we did cover the rest of the on-ramp right here as well okay. along this entire section, and that's clear as well. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know when I'm driving by there now every day, and I don't think can she be in there. That, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, we do have the, you know, the 120 and the 20, yeah. or 22, mm -hmm. 20 or 22. Yeah, we were just talking about it. It's in yeah. question. You know, we, we were never able to 100% say, this is clear. We'll head down there and let's, uh, you know, use the magnetometer. Let's okay. identify if we have any large metal objects in there, and then we can focus in on that area even more, if there is. on the 120 from kind of the northwest but like I said there's that big 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 intersection there that kind of comes down the hill and that's always been like bothering me since we left this uh, location last time when we searched this area last year and it's also been on Jennifer's you know radar for years that she's always thought hey what if this is the location where sure. she could have slid down anyway on the way 684, make sure we keep our eyes out for anything down here. Okay. This is the 
first time we get to try out the new Proton 5 JW Fisher magnetometer that we picked up a few days ago. We've assembled this uh, floating device here that we're going to tow it on behind the boats. Dan's putting it together here. It's a two-piece unit. And what this works off of is the Earth's magnetic fields. And so it's kind of different than a regular uh, metal detector. This basically, uh, once you calibrate it to the area you're in, what it does is it senses differences in those magnetic fields that would be caused by a metal object in the area you're trying to search. So this will go you know, way down below you and then depending on how big the object is that you're trying to find, you'll see on the uh, computer, the controller basically that you take on the boat with you, it has these signals. So as you're reading that pulse going across the screen, you can somewhat get an idea of how big the object is. It was really interesting though that these can be refined to a point where you can actually find a gun. Yes, small you can find small ones, but for what we're using it for, we have it set to basically find um, something the size of a car. Hand with it, you got it? Oh man, look at you with that big ass missile. Hmm. Is it supposed to float upside down, Dan? Sorry, right, I'll fix it. Oh, you know what? Actually, that's going to work out a lot better if we do float it upside down like that. Hey, see, no happy little accidents. I think we should flip this. I like how that floats on there. The uh, altimeter needs to be upright. But yeah, they don't want to flip over. Yeah. We're on the same page? Yes, I am. Yeah, you'll have to redo that one. Hey, good news is with it like this, it tows just fine, which is the yellow ones. So we're gonna take the red one off. Just gotta figure out what works as we've been doing over the past uh, two and a half, three years. Just become more efficient at what we do. Exactly. You know, and part of becoming more efficient, you know, I wanna th say thank you to each and every one of you, you know, you the viewers that have helped put us here, out here helping these families. You know, whether you are just a subscriber, it's not just a subscriber, you're helping us spread awareness and the message. And subscribing is free to do so, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, some of you also helped pitch in financially. We did have a GoFundMe for the new mag magnetometer here. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for helping us acquire this. If it all goes well and it works out like we think it's going to, we're going to set out and let's see if we can pick up a second one as well. So that way both teams have one. We did have a training with J.W. Fisher the other day. Uh, we are really happy with the way that this was actually performs in our testing and we look forward to being able to use it today and have some success with it. Fingers crossed on Leslie here, you know, and the, uh, as well as Timothy and Julie, but not just this case, but we have Randy Leach that's coming up. We have the missing bridesmaids that's coming up. We have several cases, probably half a dozen cases right now that we're looking to use the new magnetometer on. So again, thank you, you know, from all of us to you. Oh, I might have messed that up, huh? No. It's not towing like I thought it was going to. It's pulling sideways. So I do need to tow it with the rope. All right, let me have that red rope back. And let me have that other line again. You got it. Yeah. All right, so we're tuning right now. All of the metal on that guard railing over there? Yeah. Like we're picking up big time. How are we? It's 
crazy. So, what that means is that this is going to be extra tricky to locate and find if Leslie's car is under here that we're looking for the way that that's reading but then we're going to look for an additional bump. So I'm interested in this drop. See that one there? And I'm interested in this one here. Yeah. So let's head back over and see if we can identify in both locations. What we'll do is we'll head out a little bit further from the railing so that way we can try to uh, mitigate any feedback from the railing versus a car that might be out here in the water to see if we can separate the two. Yeah, it's kind of the same spot over there. I'm really interested in. And that's gonna be, so here's where the road comes out. It's kind of by that second pole over there from the bridge. Yeah. It's kind of where we're hitting it. All right, so I got a baseline again now. Okay, baseline, baseline. Coming up to it now, we'll see if I get a spike. And a weaker spike is what I'm looking for. Yeah, okay, right there. I'm getting a strong reading right there. Okay, now it's back down. So right there, I'm getting a strong reading. And we're moving further out and away, so our signal should be getting weaker when we go over it. Unless it's a pipeline, then it's gonna stay peaking each time. All right, so there we are, we're peaking again, same spot. Yeah, I bet, I bet you we have a uh, pipeline is what we have. Because we're getting the exact same spike reading, regardless of how far out we go. So that leads me to believe we have a pipeline under here somewhere. Because if, if we were getting further away and it was a car over there, we would get the spike at the same spot, but it would be a weaker spike each time. Yep, same spot. Yeah, we're right over it. Yeah, so that, that confirms that, you know, as we're pulling it straight out over that. Yeah, if you want to give everybody there an update, just let them know what's going on. But yeah, we're, um, you know, happy with the search and everything that's going on over here. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, right, bye. All right, bye. Cool. Hmm. Sounds like they're learning the new equipment and uh, it's working. Yeah. So it's good to actually yeah, determine what's a pipeline as well. So. Oh yeah, exactly for the future reference. Yeah. All that stuff's good learning. Be interesting to see what he means by the influence from the guard line, guardrail. Because if right. you see where he is now, <clears throat> and if he can pick that up outside of the water. Oh be yeah. Interesting. Well yeah, because you remember when we went through the training, how they were talking about it doesn't necessarily have to be below you it can be above you because you're just basically sensing the difference in the earth's magnetic fields yeah. and so any piece of metal once you calibrate it as you get closer is going to change what it's sensing mm. and so my guess is is it's not only the um the metal guardrail but then you'll get little pulses as as cars will be driving by too as you get closer so if you're going underneath like a metal bridge or something like you might be best to recalibrate it just before you go over. Right. So that's, what I, that's what I would think. Recalibrate it. Then right. See if any more bigger spikes come up. Right. Uh, see, look, here's a boat under here. There's an aluminum boat down there. Let's go back up to it. Well, the only thing we were able to find out there was a, a boat. Oh, you did see a boat? Yeah, found a boat. No uh, 
no vehicles. And then uh, Nick filled you in also as to the mag readings we were able to identify that was a pipeline. So it appears to work good, huh? Nice. Well, I wish I had better answers today for you. I know. But you know, we have ruled this out. We've ruled, you know, several locations out. Like you said, you know, you yeah. you no longer have to look down there and you know wonder. Yeah, exactly. That's a good thing. Yeah. And then, so is it? So tomorrow you're doing that 130, and then at the end you're coming back yeah, to down we'll come here. Down to okay, and that's tomorrow down here. Okay, and we'll on your pull way the out. Mag back gotcha. on that one. Okay. All right. Yeah, but fingers crossed that we don't have to head down there. Hope, yeah. you know, fingers crossed that maybe on 100, so. Maybe. While yeah. we did not yet get the answers we were hoping for today in bringing Leslie, Julie, and Timothy home, we were able to get Jennifer, Stephanie, and Mike several answers as to where the Guthrie's are not. Like Jennifer said, she no longer has to drive over certain bodies of water, looking down and wondering if they are in there. Today was a successful day in providing not just those answers, but also testing out new equipment that because of your support, we're able to grow and become more efficient. If you have not yet done so, please be sure to subscribe, which is free, and check out the link in the description for the upcoming episode of Tomorrow's Search. We appreciate you being here, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. We have a car in here. We might have two cars in here. Two cars there, older than the smokes.